Greetings, everyone. Greetings. Uh, I'm Dr. Scott Lively. Uh, I am a constitutional law attorney and a pastor. My wife and I run an inner city mission in Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, first of all, I want to say that uh, I have a Hebrew roots orientation in my theology, and I work very closely with Torah faithful Jews. And I know that they stand with us on these issues 100%. Uh, and I, we don't want to exclude them from this coalition and in this stand for righteousness uh, and this assault on, on humanity itself. Uh, I'm here, I, I, the, the Gone Too Far uh, movement uh, is starting today. Yes. And, uh, and we're asking, yeah. praise God for that. Gone Too Far. We're asking for everyone who feels this way to get involved in this movement and to bring in, see wh what's been happening in our country uh, has been encouraging. Uh, and President Trump has, has uh, brought together uh, evangelical Christians and populists. And right now what we represent in this room, primarily we represent the, the evangelical Christian community. Uh, but uh, this, this uh, message needs to get to the populace as well and that uh, the populace don't understand this necessarily from a biblical perspective. But they do understand when things have gone too far. And when, uh, by putting this forward now, all the people, regardless of where they may stand on general LGBT issues and whatnot, everyone can agree, almost everyone in this country can agree that they have gone too far. Right now, I've been fighting this battle for, th for about 30 years now. And, uh, and this has been my, I, it, was a, it was a single issue ministry for a very long time. I've been on the front lines of this. They went too far back in the early 90s. Yeah. They went yeah. too far back in the 80s. Yeah. And it's, they have just never stopped. And I just want to bring some historical perspective to this. Yeah. Remember back in California, the Briggs Amendment? The Briggs Amendment was going to stop homosexuals from getting teaching jobs, prevent homosexuals from going into the classroom. And what the conservatives and the Christians were saying is they're going to go in and they're going to brainwash the kids with their agenda. And the left stood up in outrage. The homosexuals would never do that to the children. Well, have they done that to the children? They absolutely have done that to the children. They have gone too far. Now, about this phrase that's, that's in the, uh, the so-called Equality Act, I want to point out, yeah, Peter's going to bring that up. I want to point out that this, this should not be called the Equality Act. This is the Supremacy Act, Amen. right? We're talking about LGBT supremacy. And uh, also, uh, uh, Anthony Kennedy, Justice Anthony Kennedy's name was uh, invoked uh, just uh, a few minutes ago. Anthony Kennedy is the worst enemy of the family in the history of the Supreme Court. Amen. He wrote all four of the majority opinions establishing gay cultural supremacy. And he began with the, with the opinion in Romer versus Evans wow. back in 1996 in which, see this is, I, I was very much involved in this. I was a spokesman for ballot measure nine, the No Special right, Rights Act in 1992 in Oregon. And a version of our act at w was actually passed in Colorado called Amendment 2. And it was, would, would have stopped minority status based on sexual orientation. The very thing that this Equality Act is supposed to do now at the federal level. And we had stood up and, and, and said, you cannot let this seed get into the ground. Yeah. An anti-discrimination yeah. policy based upon sexual orientation is the seed that contains the entire tree of the LGBT agenda and all of its poisonous fruit. Yeah. Once that seed goes into the ground and it gets planted, every other aspect of that agenda yeah. comes through. It's just a matter of time because it's all built in. It's part of the premise because the anti-discrimination uh, policy equates biblical opposition, moral opposition to that agenda as immoral and illegal. That's the premise of the anti-discrimination policy. Just compare it to, to what the black community suffered, why civil rights is legitimate for the black community, yes. but is illegitimate for, for, for behavior, right? For sexual yeah. behavior, right? Yeah. Homosexuality is not morally neutral. Skin color is completely morally neutral, yeah. right? So they just, yeah. 
So they just steamrolled over everyone on those policies and forced those anti-discrimination policies all through the country at the city level, the town level, then the state level, and now they're trying to push it through the federal government. They have gone too far. Now, do you want to, want to look and see what the agenda is? Now, often, in, in my 30 years of fighting this, I bring up the gay agenda, and what's the standard response? Do you hear from the media and the activists? Agenda? What agenda? Well, <laughs> right? As if they have no agenda, right. right? Well, they do have an agenda, and it's been written down, yeah. right? Now, in, uh, in 1972, 200 LGBT organizations met in Chicago, Illinois, and they published the 1972 Gay Rights Platform, right? No one from that community, none of the politicians that stand with them, have ever repudiated the 1972 Gay Rights Platform, ever. Mm -hmm. And if you go back and look at that, 1972 Gay Rights Platform, look it up, go back and read it, you'll see that almost everything on their list they have accomplished, almost everything. Wow. There's three things that they haven't accomplished yet. And so when you talk about the Equality Act and other purposes, right, that phrase, and other purposes, what are those other purposes? What are the things that still remain to be done from their initial written agenda? That's right. Well, there's three of them, and, and, there, and, and it's broken down into demands on the federal government and demands on the states. The demands on the state, number three, essentially the, the, the legalization of prostitution, right? And uh, uh, the, the number seven, the removal of all laws governing age of sexual consent. Wow. You understand that? Wow. The age of sexual consent. From 1972, they have been pushing for this. They have never stopped. Mm -hmm. And that's what comes in with the Equality Act. And then number eight is polygamy and polyandry, right? The no, rest no more legal restrictions on the sex or number of persons that can be in, in, a, in a legal marriage, right? So they got gay marriage through with Obergefell v. Hodges, mm. but they haven't got polyandry yet or polygamy. Those things come next. That's what is implicit in the Equality Act. They have gone too far. Now, one last point that I want to make, and then I'll turn it over to Peter, and he's got some great documentation there to show you, that all these years I was, uh, was expecting the pedophilia agenda to come in a different way. I just, I've been fighting this battle the whole time. I didn't realize they were going to bring it in through transgenderism, yeah. right? And it's suddenly, yeah. wa we're watching it right before our eyes yeah. because from the pro-pedophile, the pedophile rhetoric, yeah. they don't say pedophile rights. No, and of course not. They're talking about children's rights, yeah. the right of children to choose their sexual partners. Yeah. And, and where do we see that? We see that in the transgenderization of the children. These drag queen story hours, right, where they're promoting this on the kids, and the emergence of these prepubescent boys who are now been converted into little girls in, in costume as, ch as little boy drag queens, right? And the one, the Desmond is amazing boy up on the stage dancing for gays like it was a like it was a gay strip club with them throwing money. Could it be any more outrageous? They've gone too far. They've gone too far. It isn't just that kid, it's all of them. And at the same time, just think about this. This on Good Morning America, folks. This is through the entire leftist media has gotten behind this whole idea. What are they saying? They're saying that children have the right of self-determination yeah. about choosing their own gender identity when they're three, four, five years old, wow. where the parents then introduce hormone blockers, and wow. even some of them even have surgery. Yeah. And think about this. Wow. Think about the, the hypocrisy mm -hmm. of the progressive media yeah. and the left about this. At the same time, they are advocating this on innocent little children they're banning therapy yeah. for teenage kids yeah. that want to reorient to the design of their own bodies, yeah. right? Yeah. And, they, and, and they are declaring, both, both in the assumptions of the news stories in, and in the statements that they make, that uh, the idea of a person yeah. reorienting their sexuality to conform to their physiology mm -hmm. is somehow impossible, uh, yeah. right? And so in other words, yeah. the person's 
the, the, the state of mind, right, of a sexual orientation is somehow fixed and immutable, yeah. right? But at the same time, that the physical body in which you're inhabiting yeah. that has male or female genitalia defined by DNA yeah. is fluid. Yeah. Right. That, that's fluid, yeah. and sexual orientation is fixed. Right. It's insanity. They have gone too far. Thank you very much.